the topic assigned to me is the panel discussion. Already my friend introduced all the learned panelists. We are going to analyze some selected cases. As all of you know that diagnosis is not the important. The point is here in the given scenario, what is our thought process? How we try to analyze and how we try to derive that what is the likely possibility and reach the diagnosis. And all of us know that I think that's the motive of keeping such type of the sessions. And I know all the my four panelists, they are going to help us that what should be the thought process. I think in between, if there is some response from the audience, please raise your hand. I'm sure that I don't have only four panelists, but I have more than 250 panelists. And then I'm sure that we'll get the more and better solutions. With that few words, let me start the case discussion. This was a two months old male child and for our kind information, these are the all real cases which we have come across with the good records. Two months old child presented with mild fever, cold rhinitis and irritability. Persistent jaundice, taking breastfeeding, non consecutive parents, full term normal delivery, birth rate was 2.1, no NICU admission. Mother had fever, 15 days before the delivery. This is little bit old case and therefore somebody treated an obstetrician or physician with the antimalarials and antibiotics, she recovered. Mother had even pulmonary cox one and a half years back. She completed her anti-tuberculous therapy. She had one spontaneous abortion at two months amenorrhea. This was the information available from the mother. When I examined, weight was 2.6 kg. If I remind you at two months from birth rate of 2.1. Head was 34, length was 52. Mild febrile, vitals within normal limits, AF normal, PF was close. Jaundice was significant, no cyanosis. Liver was 4 cm, firm, non-tender, spleen was 3 cm and firm. No free fluid in peritoneal cavity, cervical and inguinal lymph nodes were palpable. Respiratory systems, no findings, there was no cardiac murmur. Neurologically, child was having the good activity. I would like to ask Dr. Any of you, yes, please, Dr. Ramesh. What will be your thought process in this type of the scenario? Sir, can you go to first slide? Yes, sir, sure. Yes. <coughs> so here is a two months old male child and uh, child has come to you, sir, for mild fever, cold rhinitis, irritability. So mostly with some intercurrent viral infection. There is a history of persistent jaundice. So baby is harboring jaundice uh, probably since birth and has presented with some mild viral infection. Baby is taking breast feeding, so compensated, no danger signs. Born to young, non consanguineous parents. I request Dr. Ramesh, because yes. if we repeat it to take more time, already information is there. Can you focus yeah, your two, points and come child to Child was 2.1 kg, so, so mother is uh, uh, not well and that has reflected into SGA. Uh, there is one positive history of uh, fever with rigors. It could be due to malaria, it could be due to UTI. It was 15 days before the delivery. So most probably that has not affected the weight. So there is something going on in mother since beginning of the conception. And sir, uh, uh, tuberculosis treatment completed? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, and, and plus uh, there is one spontaneous abortion again that is uh, not suggestive of good maternal health. Next slide please sir. 
so as you said uh, right now it is 2.6 kg weight so uh, child has barely gained 500 grams of weight in 2 months so baby is definitely having some chronic problem and uh, there is a jaundice so a liver is 4 cm firm so it is fibrous so already it is a chronic process and spleen is also there along with the lymph nodes so definitely there is involvement of reticulo endothelial system in some way and child has presented for some viral infection to you uh, sir i would like to uh, uh, have a comment First, just i request to my friends that please mm -hmm. already information it displayed oh, no. use that information for coining some very important important clues and come to the your i will say impression or the comments yeah congenital malaria would be something that i'd be looking for i'd oh. also looking for uh, some congenital infections also uh, probably an idea from the torch right uh, assay and uh, i would also like to have an opinion uh, have a uh, about the eye examination is there any positive findings on the eye examination i would want to look out for that and of course ask the mother about the staining of the diaper the color of the stools so that's what stool i stool of the color was normal okay so that will then will rule out any biliary atresia or something like okay. that okay what is what is your i will say ultimately focus what do you think as you said one is malaria one is second you said there some congenital infection okay yeah. anybody else i will uh, say beyond this yeah a fever with uh, lymphadenopathy always include shows inflammation first okay so there is persistent jaundice in this case most probably two months we always have on a conventional teaching breast breast milk jaundice okay and that condition always we are taught is uti or malaria where the jaundice is ongoing okay and uh, as the information clearly shows that there is an ongoing inflammation probably we there is a history of tuberculosis treatment in mother so we also have to have in mind congenital tuberculosis and the status of mother whether she is totally treated or not is not known and second thing is the the posterior fontanella is closed that means hypothyroid can be set aside Here dr rangnath and anything more from your side i should guy should i go further because already discussed yes. that maybe yes. the malaria yes. maybe the congenital infection maybe the tuberculosis maybe the uti right i think these are the points which have been considered torch Any group of infections is the yeah, first torch possible. already discussed okay. first possible so i think the, this is the uh, i will say echo of most of the friends let me go further sir eye examination more information sorry eye, eye examination eye examination normal suppose if what you want dr ramesh yes. intrauterine infections to rule out okay but in the eye what you will look for choreoretinitis okay. choreoretinitis cataract you know that the suppose cataract if you get that fever so cataract yeah now on investigations already which we have done hemoglobin was 9.5 count you can see normal differential not much problem i will say information platelets were low esr and crp not significantly raised mp negative uh as i said platelets were low bilirubin 12 direct type 5 indirect 7 mild enzymatic reaction pt normal csf already it was done because child was irritable and mild febrile blood culture urine culture csf culture no growth usg showed hepatosplenomegaly and of course significant cervical and inguinal lymph nodes now any specific points if you make the one specific comment I think already we have discussed from these info investigations, sir. Yes, sir. Seeing the picture and the developments, what you have presented, sir, it is an intrauterine infection that is going okay. on. That is the conclusion. But if I need some more investigations, reports. Yeah, it will come. It will come. Whatever we have from that, we yes. have to discuss. Yes. So I think, sir, consider that that is a likely some. intrauterine infection okay agreed one x ray anything more one x ray of long bones may be helpful sorry x ray of long bones x ray of long bones which long bones long bones means legs okay sir what you want to, to see out, to rule out epiphysitis sorry? and epiphysitis okay and periosteal reaction okay for sex syphilis congenital syphilis okay absolutely i think very important here what are the investigations were done hbc was negative 
serological test for all the torch was negative. Coolest test somebody has done negative, thyroid normal, chest x-ray was normal. And then lady what next? Actually we were not clear that what we should do with these investigations. But the point which I, I think this is also old case in the round I was there. Child was in the lap of mother. For giving the findings to my resident, I touched the wrist. And child cried. I, I thought that the child is disturbed. But when I was palpating on liver and spleen, child was not crying. Again, for pulse I touched, child was crying. Exactly what Dr. Rangnathan has, I will say, touched. I went for the x-ray wrist. They reported as osteomyelitis, but it was osteitis. Absolutely, sir, to save the time and to go for the next case, just analysis. Retrospective analysis, we came to know that there was a spontaneous abortion, which is known in syphilis. And treated care was not taken, and therefore VDRL was not done. It was IUGR baby. Cold, that means that was not cold, but nasal snuffle that we realized later on. And of course, they were not gaining weight and jaundice and hyperosphere and lymph adenopathy. Later on, we checked even the perineal region. There was excoriation. Investigation showed anemia, low platelets, rage enzymatic reaction, jaundice. Or common investigations were negative. X-ray was showing osteitis. We went straight away. Capina, peridium, hemagglutination test. And sir, compliments, it was positive. Titer was very significant, gone into 320. Later on, we refer this mother to dermatologist. It, mother was also positive. Child was treated for the penicillin for a kind of information, and child recovered. But was the next problem, when the child was on, and after two years on follow-up, even parents were very key, and they said that again with the report that sir, still the TPH is positive, low titer, but what positive? What should be done? Anybody of you, sir? Doctor okay, Ashwan, you can take it, please. <clears throat> the child is treated. Child is clinically absolutely fine now. Nothing is there. Now child is two years old. But the parents have come with this report that still it is positive. Anybody? I think TPHA is positive even after treatment. Yes. So after how much time? That, that was the question from the parents. Uh, anyway, anybody from audience? I think more than six months. Yeah, the point is for our information, that uh, the TPHA or even the uh, FTA antibody absorption test, fluorescent antibody test, you know the test becomes the positive, they say that soon even after the infection. So a newborn at any time you can go for, suppose if you are suspected, remain positive for almost the lifetime this test. Even with this uh, adequate treatment, it is useful for the diagnosis, but limited useful for the evaluation of response and for the follow-up. So assure the parents that the child is all right, taste is going to remain with the low titer positive, even almost maybe for the lifetime. Don't bother for that. And I think we also should not go for the retreatment or something. Thank you very much. I will say for the first case, I am also in hurry looking at Dr. Sham Kokarina that I, I also want to complete the five cases which I have planned. <laughs> so I may be little bit hurry. I request again my friend panelists, let's please help me. This was a six months old child, second case. Illness of seven weeks, <coughs> fever mild to moderate, then high grade, developed the neck swelling, child was irritable, hospitalized, diagnosed with neck cellulitis, treated with the antibiotics. You can see that almost everything was given, but no response. Meanwhile, child developed the convulsions, and even the left side hemiparesis. Rest of the history was non-contributory. Anybody can give the thoughts that what is the what thing is developing going on? Yes, Dr. Ramesh. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, looking to the history, child started from mild fever and went to severe and was treated with almost all the antibiotics. So either we are dealing with atypical bacterial infection or there is some hidden infection. Okay. And it has been going on since seven weeks. So it is fairly now. Urban. So he says either the atypical or difficult organism. Okay. Anybody is having more comment or should I go further for more information? more information. Okay, sir. I think that is a good way. And what investigations were available to me before referring this? You can see the hemoglobin was fairly good around 8. Count was always high. Differential UVNC polymorphonuclear. ESR was always high. CRP sky high. Platelets going even high, high, high. Just x-ray some 
opacity usb make sure lymph node on both the sides now sir information is to you sir high platelet count with uh, uh, also a high total count also sir uh, though it doesn't fit perfectly but two things comes to our mind one is kawasaki and another was is uh, kafes disease so i'll have to have a x-ray of the mandible okay let me inform the house the panelists they don't know the cases the only the clinical information on their message i i inform that only the clinical information important clues and confirmatory diagnosis are not sent to you and that was the info. you can see that how they are able to analyze <clears throat> okay sir so now on examination in spite of all the antibiotics and the fever mild tachycardia tachypnea a for that level pelor eyes congested in uh, axillary inguinal cervical all lymph nodes no murmur irritable child now the child had the seventh of palsy query but the definitely power was decrease on the left side and dtr were brisk and no next step i think to save the time if i even provide you the investigations <coughs> csf was 45 sugar protein 120 cells only 20 mri brain was reported as normal now what next aseptic meningitis okay aseptic meningitis fever with uh, acute face reactants very much increase yes sir with the right uh, upper zone involvement we can even have uh, tuberculosis or adenovirus infection which is very common absolutely even with the conjunctivitis which was there okay anything else any more information or should i proceed further if anybody wants to add any something ultrasound ultrasound findings yeah yeah i am coming ultrasound of neck was done i think already i talked to you that lymphadenopathy was there <clears throat> anybody from the house just comment non accurate sir i forgot that the front rayon is filled up by the stalwart okay sir let me go because you order dr sham i can't say no echo was done and that was a coronary dilatation and even this left coronary circumflex branch was also involved and in that was the sir, case of kawasaki with aseptic meningitis we even the left side hemiparesis due to the vasculitis the sir, point only, is the only... point is we are learning from our experts the kawasaki probably typical now we are not missing almost we are fully sensitized sometimes on the contrary over diagnose but yes the atypical or some atypical presentation or some unusual presentation probably that we should keep in mind that was the point of bringing this case for the yes, sir yes, sir it is it is only yes sir absolutely yes sir very good sir very but it is it uh, this case sir your case include is included in the 1 to 3% of kawasaki who which have neurological yes, problems sir. yes sir yeah. absolutely that was the point for big yeah sir absolutely what sir, sir. said is up that usually the typical kawasaki present with single and even the unilateral cervical but here we can see from it was confusing or misguided both sides also yeah that even the multiple sir, cervical i would have liked another uh, investigation that is uh, nt pro bnp right we, though it is not a stand alone test but Absolutely. still the studies that have come in we can uh, go for that and probably say about the treatment because it is an indicator of uh, whether yeah. you uh, i'll be giving given a global into that I, i will say the treatment part follow up are uh, deleted for the sake of to save Sorry, the time most of the most of the places we don't have uh, echo echo support Absolutely. so nt probe will help you high nt probe will give us a 100% suspicion of kawasaki very important message yes sir uh, when, on the contrary we are expecting that it goes to be normal and we should be get the opportunity to treat before the development of the complication it's a good time and for that still we want yes. to confirm the diagnosis then i think this investigation will be quite useful okay. in this patient in this patient there was yeah 
because the age is less because it was totally unusual that was the point for coming bringing the case over here for the discussion <coughs> or even i figure the follow up the child ultimately after the treatment responded on follow up you are totally normal uh third case i think little bit long so please be with me seven years pain in less of 20 days i will not read all the sentences you can see the fever mild to moderate then treated by the pediatrician, all sorts of antibiotics. Ultimately, child was given the, when the AKT, even the uncommon antibiotics like clarithromycin. And such a child with the, after three weeks, there was now the joint pain. Probably third case was, no, was knowing that Dr. Chitkara is going to ask for the joint pain. So here the joint pain was there. Rheumatology started the naproxen and referred to us, this patient was from Rajkot, for persistent high grade fever, joint pain, and occasional vomiting and decreased appetite. More information, investigations re before referring to us already done. Hemoglobin was fairly good, around 9 to 10. Total count, you can see that every time high with polymorphonuclear reaction. Platelets also, I will say not sky, but sky, sky high. ESR was raised. Other investigations, tuberculosis point of view normal, negative, Vidal was negative, renal functions, liver functions, CSF not showing anything positive, ASO type are negative, RA factor was done, ANA was negative, HI was negative, all cultures negative, even urine for AFB somebody did was negative, MLS was normal, sickling taste was negative, brucellosis negative, chest x-ray was normal. USD abdomen, mild altered texture of liver, increased echogenicity of kidney, thickening of jejunum and ileum, and enlarged mesentic lymph nodes. If I provide more history, which we got later on, which was not revealed at last court, that this child was having a multiple abscesses with cellulitis over chest at the age of one and a half years. Now the child is seven years. That means almost six years back which require the hospitalization for 10 days, treated with IV antibiotics, two units of blood, AKT for six months, even abscesses require IND. Tuberculosis history to grandfather, he had hemoptysis and he died three years back. I think with this information, what are your possibilities? Let Dr. Ramesh, you can start. This uh, history of uh, multiple abscesses in the past and uh, uh, currently the child has presented with the infection it is very much suggestive of immuno, some immunodeficiency and till first slide if you don't go to second slide then it seems that there is some hidden infection probably it could be in the joint also as the reports are suggestive of uh, pyogenic gross pyogenic infection first two slides okay anything the else, first sir? two slides suggest that it is an fuo case because fever is there since last 20 days and uh, in the second slide you find that there is increase of uh, platelet count again and acute phase reactants with uh, multiple abscess uh, we should suspect uh, probably a chronic infection ongoing infection and uh, all the tests are negative can we have uh, leptospira in mind okay leptospirosis or anything else from your side? Sir, the USG findings, please, once more. Sorry? USG findings, ultrasound, ultrasound findings, sir. Okay. Sorry. USG abdomen, yeah. ultra texture of liver, increased echogenesis of kidneys, thickening of jejunum and ileum, and enlarged mesentic node. Sir, wide spectrum of possibilities here. Sir, tuberculosis is, is of course, one of them. Uh, Lymphoproliferative disorders, malignancy, uh, immunodeficiency 
but the one and a half uh, the uh, typical his uh, the per specific history of uh, abscesses at one and a half years yes, of sir. age yes. that can uh, that also opens up a possibility of what happened at that time because blood transfusion also was given so uh, in infective endocarditis we have uh, certain presentations almost uh, though not very typical but we have that okay. so whether that connects to these findings or not uh, that uh, we'll have to connect okay so it remains one of the possible sir anything from you beside these that may be the tuberculosis maybe the primary mirror deficiency disorder maybe the leptospirosis maybe the bacterial endocarditis maybe the malignancies anything else the only evidence in the history is entire family is suffering with tuberculosis yeah so my decision will be disseminated tuberculosis okay disseminated tuberculosis now fine now if i go further <coughs> on examination you can see the weight height i think not much affected but febrile tachycardia blood pressure maintained saturation maintained pelor no jaundice cervical nephrodias as sir said mark tachycardia but no murmur liver 4 cm spleen not palpable and cns was nat i think already point has been discussed investigations again now the count is 66400 and polymorphs 94 platelets again almost 10 lakhs esr 140 and crp more than 250 around 240 LDH raised, but sugar, renal functions, liver functions, electrolytes normal. Chest X-ray was normal. Even if I provide more information, USG on CT even was done, showed hepatosplenomegaly. Spleen now revealed the multiple splenic abscesses, possibly necrosis due to the lymphoma. This was the comment from uh, radiology. Now, anything new or very specific comment from any officer, please. because now we have this finding even if i take one step further can you think that what can be the causes for multiple splenic abscesses because now we have that very unusual significant finding on ct that itself indicates splenic abscess in, itself indicates he had septicemia and he is suffering with bacterial plus added on some other deficiency is what he has absolutely so some deficiency and bacterial infection with the immune deficiency yes sir anything from you okay okay so if i go further just for information whenever we come across the splenic abscesses think for brucellosis in sickle cell it can occur falciparum following the infarction yes it can occur and it is known somehow with the good drugs we don't come across bacteria endocarditis can cause and even the plague which is rare but yes most of the investigations we did not suggesting or not favoring for these things and we went straight away for the eco we showed the vegetations at mitral wall cast and confirm as one of our in the panel said bacterial endocarditis besides all other possibilities but the point is the chapter does not close over here blood culture showed this streptococcal pneumonia i talked to the microbiologist that this is not the organism for the bacterial endocarditis now what will be your thought process the case has been investigated extensively but the findings were never disclosed to us findings like because the no the basic thing is when somebody is having such a prolonged we should do an echo that's the basic first point fundamental if you hide that one then it will be like this <laughs> all of us know all of, all of us know that after discussing or after discussing any case many times my post graduates tell me sir the lack they sir very nicely given in the nail sir very nicely given in the nail sir but we we'll have to search for that yes, sir. Sir. sir it was no, no. it was known after the some 3 to 4 or 6 weeks agreed no, no. agreed sir. any case of po the point is that a message any po if you don't have the answer go for the bone marrow go for the city abdomen go for the eco Besides cultures and other things, I think absolutely, sir. But you know, this wisdom comes less came later on. Re, sir, re-emerging of uh, previousness. No, sir, nothing, nothing was there. No sign. No, no evidence was there. No. Sir, Doctor Sham, uh, believe me, not only myself, but is two other consultants were there. One pediatrician, I think, he is sitting there. 
and it was not there at all. Even we, we, we didn't think for that murmur and everything, but we didn't get later on the eco wasp. Anyway, but, but I, will, I will take it further. Streptococcal is not the common organism. What is the answer from you? Yeah. Okay. Spleen is present, sir. So I think I am getting the oh, opportunity quite. to go further so that I can complete the case. Function. Dr. Shah may say that multiple abscesses even in the past also. Why? Immunodeficiency disorder, multiple splenic abscesses, back to endocarditis. And therefore, we went for the complement and multiple splenic abscesses, and everything was due to the C3 deficiency. And C3 deficiency in this case was again discussed and confirmed by Dr. Mukesh Desai and he said, yes, it is the whole story. Even the abscess is in the past was also because basically child is having the immunodeficiency. Of course, immunodeficiency that if we say it's good, but you know there are 430 immunodeficiency disorders, we'll have to locate it. Now going for one more case. <coughs> I think last but one, please give me the time. 15 years old maid. Started with fever, sore throat, cough for a week, better for somehow 10 days. Again, high grade fever 100, 203, redness of eyes, body ache, that lasted for a few days. Low platelets were detected. In between, child was better for 15 days. Again, the fever started, and I think this type of story is not uncommon. Now, the fever again increased 100, 203. Hospitalized under care of physician. Diagnosis is enteric fever, treated with all the antibiotics which you can read from the screen. Later on, joint child there was a joint pain, swelling and el elbow, wrist and knees were there. Readmitted under the care of physician. Diagnosis as reactive arthritis. I will run a little bit fast. Treated again with the IV fluid, IV paracetamol, naproxen, hydroxychloroquine. Consulted by rheumatologist, diagnosed as I, I could not understand what is the SPA, but some rheumatological condition started the solimedrol, oral sulfasalaxine, and symptomatic as well as supportive treatment. Later on, again the steroid, developed now the skin rashes, diarrhea and high grade fever, which was considered due to some energy, treated with some other drugs and antibiotics. When brought to us, fever 101 to 103, joint swelling, skin rashes, edema face, body ache was complained, and decreased oral intake, and probably I have these pictures also I will show you. Chicken pox just seven years back, at the age of seven years. Asthma to mother, no contact or tuberculosis, some vaccines were given. On examination, temperature was there, febrile child, vitals normal, edema face, sclera was yellowish, macular papillary rash all over the body, Cervical, axillary, inguinal, all lymph nodes enlarged. Left and is swollen, tender. Other systemic examination non contributory. Liver just one centimeter and spleen was not palpable. These were the pictures of the child, 15 years old boy. You can see the puffy face and even the generalized this type of the rashes all over the body. I think this information is sufficient. What will be the possibilities? Any of you, please. Uh, maculopapular rash with fever, scrub typhus should be number one. Right. But many questions can be raised about that uh, involvement of the joints. Uh, first, why levofloxacin was started and whether this joint something can be... I think all these things were started, I don't have earlier, answer because yeah. the previous people. <laughs> well, there it's are so very many questions that why they have started. <laughs> right. I know that they should not, but this is something... Already I got it. But joint involvement uh, after levofloxacin, IV, levofloxacin. But I think if I clarify, probably it is not due to drug. Consider that with the disease process. Okay. That will help you. Then uh, the spectrum, I think it start, should, it should start with scrub typhus first. Okay, scrub typhus number one. Sir, anything else from you? The amount of uh, drugs he has received and the various diagnoses that were in entertained by the physicians, it shows it's not a simple case first, and it has involved multiple systems. I would like to have the other investigations before I say anything. Right. Otherwise, if otherwise I'll give yeah. a DD. Sir, otherwise I'll give you a DD. Yes, sir, DD, DD, we want the DD. 
We go for the final word. And I think any clinician has the final word. We are not going to discuss. We want to try to find out the final word. Of course, all the possibilities. So your possibilities, sir. It's a connective tissue disorder. Right. That has to be ruled out. Yes. Then can you name few connective tissue disorder presenting in this way? A rash, lymph node enlargement, plus joint pains, and 18 or 19. What was the age? 18. 15 years. 15. 15. 15. 15. So, it should be a type of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Any variety of what juvenile what arthritis. What okay. What yes, sir. What Systemic onset juvenile arthritis. Okay. 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 And uh, the fever has been since long standing. The patient was on multiple drugs. Probably my first on uh, is Togia. Should I, should I go for that? Some more investigations here, then we'll conclude it, sir. Okay, sir. I'm afraid of the, my chairperson. They, if they ask me to stop, I'm afraid of it. I want to complete it. These are the investigations. Further, what you have done, at, I think before referring to us, you can see the count almost normal. Differential not much helpful. PCV okay. MP was never seen. Practice where, as I said, it's at low, but not the coming in the definition of the thrombocytopenia. Creatine once was normal, SGPT normal, a refactor was negative. Again, not many investigations, hemoglobin of course same, count now going the lower side, 2700, 300, 500, 3500. Differential you can see, not much. ESR was not even raised. MP was negative. Platelets definitely every time low or even the thrombocytopenia. SGPT just yes, every time mild enzymatic reaction. Even further investigation, urine multiple times didn't show anything. Investigations for dengue nakati, typhoid dot IgM nakati, uric acid was normal, chikungunya IgM was rapid test was nakati, procalcitonin was not helping much. Even HLA B27 was done by rheumatologist nakati, RA factor nakati, ANA nakati, ferritin fortunately not raised, anti SCV nakati, TSH normal. Vidal negative, X-ray NED. Even more investigation before somebody asked me. <coughs> PSG abdomen, first time normal, but on follow-up almost after a month, terminal ileum, mildly libatus, mesentric nodes. And after again one month, mild long segment terminal ileitis with enlarged clustered mesentric nodes, reactive lymph nodes, right lumbar region, moderate splenomegaly, borderline hepatomegaly, the size they have given in the bracket, with reactive enlarged periportal lymph nodes. USD local parts, knees, 4 cm strip of fluid conduction in pre patellar space, extending into lateral aspect of right knee, mild synovial thickening was seen. 7 mm strip of the fluid conduction in pre patellar space, extending into lateral aspect of left knee, mild synovial thickening was seen. And I think many more information is with you, sir. Now, what is your sir, possibility? you have given so much information about uh, synovial thickening. Were there any rice bodies present there, sir? Anything, any other findings? Nothing. But no. it's not a chronic, that means we are not looking at... At least there was no swelling clinical. Yes, pain was there. All your arthritis, ileum, intestine is involved, skin presentation was also there. It is definitely a connective tissue disorder. Yes. And if you want to classify, there may be 1001. I'm not interested. So, in Dr. Ragnathan says there I any variety of some connected tissue disorder. Yes. Hospital examination. Hospital examination. No, sir. Just routinely what I can see, that's all. Yes, sir. CBNET done or not done? CBNET was not done. Not done. If it has been done and negative, then I accept. Otherwise, disseminated tuberculosis is also a presentation. Okay. So, tuberculosis is one more next possibility. Anything else? Okay. Can you inform me the time? This was the later on somehow. First time it was negative. I don't know why it was done or not properly. But the PCR for the FMI virus was positive. And that was the case of infectious mononucleosis. Last case and only, I would say, less than two to three minutes. Very short case. Was it a coincidental finding of infectious mononucleosis? Yes, very good comment. 
He has been sick for so many days. This can be a coincidental. It doesn't know it's value as far as we are concerned. Hey. Because he was on steroids for a long time. But later on, for your information, if I tell you the follow-up, child was absolutely fine. For, I will say, more than two to three, this patient was from Surat. Staying actually basically from Saurashtra, staying at Surat. And now even, after these many years also, child is coming to me, sir. It was 15 years now, almost 17, 18 years. And stopped all drugs. But it is stop, normal. Sir, stopped all drugs and left the child to recover on its own. Okay. That should be the attitude. I think this philosophy always keeps us happy. That whatever it is, right or wrong, understood or not understood, but the child recover. That's good. Yeah, I think that philosophy is good for us. Thank you very much. Now the last case. <coughs> Five and a half years old male child, presented with high grade fever, vomiting, pain in abdomen, leg muscle pain. I think this is already very clear cut case if I talk to you with even the investigations, it was dengue. The point which I want to discuss and I will come to the focus point. Even the NS1 was positive, IgG, IgM was positive. Very uncomplicated, treated with simply with fluids, later on oral, paracetamol, and almost child was absolutely fine. But after the four days, we are planning to discharge. Uh, sorry, after the four days, the child developed the, actually not persistent, but mild fever was there and now the fever increased. But there was no vomiting, no pain in the abdomen, urine was good, no erythema, but the child was now irritable, which was not at the time of the dengue. Vitals were normal. Abdomen was soft, liver 2 cm, spleen not palpable, other systems on examination, no any positive finding was found. My question is, what could be the reasons for fever and irritability in Pakka diagnosed case of dengue even after the recovery? Yes, sir. Uh, it seems that uh, he was a clear uh, cut patient of dengue fever from which probably he has recovered. And now there is an inflammatory storm later on which has given rise to fever and irritability. So, so dengue part is over and uh, in any viral infection, I would think rather suspect HLH first. Okay, such so type of patient situation. is going for the complication like HLH. Now, is it so that HLH will go after the recovery or during the phase of the illness? Yeah, here, therefore I said, here the patient recover. Even the almost we are on the point to discharge. Might Can be there be coexisting? And now it has increased. Can there be coexisting uh, infection? Okay, that's very important point. Maybe some because you know India any infection can be there and very common even. Because so that's very and rickettsia point. go together most. Yeah, yeah, anything, sir. Anything beyond that? That either the HLH, right? Not convincing, but still. Second point, sir, said that search for the other associated infection with the dengue. Yes. Beyond that, anything? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Yes. 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 The zone of the, the first part yes. is the febrile part, viremic part. Second part is a febrile part. Third is a simple viral fever. That's immunological, not related to viremia. And during that time, during the recovery phase, they go in for a rash, particularly palmar and plantar rashes, in which child be irritable. So what points we got that either these HLH or some co-associated co-infection or even the immune some mechanism after the dengue is not allowing the child to go for the normal phase. Anything else? How many minutes may I know from the chairperson? Okay. Now I think already points it discussed the possibility that prolong of immune mediated phase of the dengue. Sometimes we say that without any reason. Just fever in the dengue, reported on Indian pediatrics, can remain even for weeks to, weeks to months together. But the patient, if remains all right, please don't do anything. I will not speak anything what is written in the Indian pediatrics because we may go from the practice from tomorrow. Second, coexistent infection, definitely, and even the local sometimes febitis or something which we should do. It. Somehow, secondary bacterial infection will come to our mind, but they say very nicely. Then the dengue somehow, even in spite of the leukopenia, the secondary bacterial infection is not so common. Unless kept in some complicated ICU or so. But in 
uncomplicated case kept probably in some general ward or so, in spite of even the low count, so I think that may not be the common. That is the, even the dictum from the standard textbooks. Now, again, on repeat investigations not helping much, as you said, other infections we ruled out, urine was normal, culture no growth, x-ray was normal, USG abdomen mild hepatomegaly, no ascites, mentotris was negative. But what next already we have discussed? Now the child has developed these type of the pictures. After probably five to seven days of the fever or so. And the point is to save the time. Now repeat CBC count is high, polymorphonuclear reaction, platelets raised, CRP raised, SGPT yes, SGOT raised, LDH. Albumin was low, and I'm sure that from this the thoughts are clear. USG abdomen showed hepatomegaly. USG neck showed the enlarged knee nodes. Anything else, sir? Comment? Yeah. Before I think organizer says stop, let me stop. It was Kawasaki, treated with immunoglobulin, patient recover. But this was not to our knowledge, and I opened the Indian pediatrics. 2017, Dr. Piyush Gupta has reported that, that the Kawasaki is known to be triggered after this dengue fever. And he said there are so many patients of the dengue we see, but trigger for the Kawasaki is not so common that he reported, and dengue fever triggering Kawasaki is known. This is just want to share with you. Thank you very much, sir, for giving this opportunity. And I should thank my, all the four panelists for best, I will say, the way in which they, without any much information, how they analyze. I want now, I want now, an important message, sir, from each uh, one of the panel. You can give your opinion. I will say one important message for the audience. Emerging, re-emerging, other diseases are being discussed. But coming back up, the venereal diseases is observed already, and it has been highlighted by the WHO. So syphilis is going to be a continuous, what we have seen as students is going to come back. So also pertussis. So also other diseases which are going to come back due to this one. Plus the amount of, the number of investigations that are being in relied upon ignoring the clinical science and clinical examination and your experience will lead all us up to that state. So, Thank so you. Sir, emerging, re emerging infection, common we'll have to keep in mind. <clears throat> and that's very important that examination and history is more important than. Yes, sir, please, important message. That is very short, but. Uh, please, uh, right. So, very, very difficult cases. <laughs> <laughs> Clinical examination is hallmark what, sir, says fever for more than eight days, thrombocytopenia, less than five years, always. Suspect Kawasaki. What sir says now? We have seen two cases of Kawasaki in all the five cases. So suspect Kawasaki, if you are in a peripheral area, do, do a pro BNP. Don't, don't forget. In fact, uh, all the cases are very interesting, but I'll give an anecdote. Our batch has a colleague who has a syndrome in the canteen. He has a syndrome in the canteen. He has a syndrome in the canteen. He has a syndrome in the canteen. told him, that this time it seems that the gold medal is sure. I mean, it belongs to you if you pass. <laughs> so, so full credit to Badal sir for uh, for uh, the atypical cases. Thank you, sir. We respect the seniors because they taught us think about common disease first. Second point is uncommon presentation of common disease. Today, SAR has misled us into that. And lastly. <laughs> If you make a rare diagnosis, we are rarely correct. This, this was the uh, thing. Sir, age, sir. <laughs> date of birth. Date of birth. <laughs> My birth date is on the record is wrong, but which is on the record is 1st June 1955. He is senior. I am 56 no, born. No, one minute. <laughs> As per the date of birth, he is senior and I am junior. But probably the teaching of the same people is still remaining with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh